Washington DC où se tient le forum entre la RDC et les états unis d'Amérique. Ici, on rencontre également des investisseurs américains qui sont intéressés à venir faire le business au Congo. Et parmi eux, nous avons avec nous sur ce, ce plateau, M. Tig Egan. Uh, I, I hope I didn't mistake your name. Marius, you got it right. Yeah, thank you so much. Donc, il est le CEO de Energy X, qui est une compagnie spécialisée dans le, la, dans le lithium. Et il est intéressé à venir investir en, en République démocratique du Congo. Tig, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having us. It's a great event. Thank you so much. So, can, can you tell us, what did you, why are you here today at the event? So, Energy X is an international critical materials and lithium company. Mm -hmm. And we have projects both in North America and South America uh, producing lithium for millions of electric vehicles. I and heard that you are the only lithium company today at this event. Yeah, that was how, very... How does that feel? That was very surprising to me. I mean, the event, you have over 500 people here in Washington, D.C. And uh, some great investment firms, mining firms, energy firms. I was surprised that we were the only lithium company here. Mm -hmm. Let's back to your company you were talking about. Yeah, so our our interest in the event is Africa in general, but but mainly the DRC and you know the wealth of critical materials and natural resources that, that are in the DRC. And I think that, you know, a lot of people in the United States don't really know about Africa or the DRC. So an event like this that can educate uh, is critical to creating relationships and collaboration. Mm -hmm. So what did you really learn today listening to all the speakers that were there? So I knew that the DRC was one of, if not the biggest country in Africa. The second biggest country. The second biggest yeah. country. Yeah. But, but I didn't know that uh, it has 112 million population. Uh, there are 26 states in DRC. And, and I knew, I know how, how rich it is in natural resources, but hearing some of the speakers talk about some of the infrastructure that's going up and, and the mining capabilities, like, you know, Right now, it's a learning process. Um, and and you, those are some of the things that I learned. And I think really the interest in the United States to, to learn and to understand the investment that's already going there is critical. What, what, what's going to be the, the perspective as an American CEO when it's come to go to invest in, 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 in countries like Congo? What do you know before, before that? Yeah, I think that... So I've been through this once now where we've made a uh, major investment in Chile. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're, we're planning uh, a project of over a billion dollars U.S. in Chile. So it takes a long time to get to that point where you feel confident and comfortable making those types of investments. Uh, but, but it always starts with, you know, meeting, meeting people from the country, having a large economic and investment forum like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, it'll be followed up by trips. You know, I look forward to visiting DRC. Mm -hmm. uh, I was speaking with, with some of the folks at the conference and we're already planning a trip for the first quarter of next year. So January, February, March, where I'll, where I'll come over to DRC for one or two weeks and, you know, explore. Um, go to Lubumbashi, go to Monono, and see some of the territories, and then start to meet uh, some of the politicians that are also here, uh, that will be over there, that can pave the path for the types of permitting and regulation and concessions that are necessary to then make a large investment Uh, to produce the natural resources that the country is rich with. You'll be, I heard that you'll be meeting with the Prime Minister of Congo soon. What would you tell her? I would tell, uh, you know, I'm going to tell her that I'm very excited uh, to learn more about the country. You know, I think that, so last year I actually, I've been to Africa twice in my life. Um, and last year I had, I had the, the pleasure of climbing Mount Kilimanjaro 
and seeing some of the gorillas in uh, your neighboring your neighbors, Uganda and Rwanda. And Africa is just a beautiful place. And I think that the 21st century um, is the century of Africa in terms of industrializing it. And, you know, that takes investment. So I'm excited to see how we can work together. And that's what I'm going to tell let's, her. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, that'll be the end. The, I can call it maybe requirement. Sorry for my vocabulary, can be poor. What can be the major requirement for an American investor to come to a country that he doesn't really know, like Congo? Yeah. There, there are two main requirements or conditions for investment. Uh, and those are number one, trust. And number two is certainty. No investor wants to get into a situation where they lose trust or there's an uncertain path forward where there's fear of, say, maybe nationalization or, uh, you know, changing circumstances that could affect a large investment. I mean, you know, when we're talking about big mining operations for lithium or copper or uranium, these are $1 billion plus investments. And you have to have trust in your partners um, that they'll do the right thing and help you uh, operate and, and, and move any process forward and certainty in that. It can't be, this isn't a five year or a two year investment. This is a 40 year investment, right? And that's how, that's how long it takes to make investors back their money um, so those are the types of things and trust and certainty can really only be built over time. Um, and it takes, it takes consistency in order to build those things. Um, so, so those are kind of the things that, that I look for in a partner, whether it's, you know, whether it's a domestic partner or a foreign partner. Okay, that will be, that'll be almost all. But I wanted to ask a question about, um, it's not a political question, it's about uh, China that is very uh, present in Congo. Do you see China, Chinese business like uh, people that you going to be dealing with or your way of doing, doing business is so different from China that you will be feeling like you are welcomed in Congo? Mm hmm I, I probably have a different view on China than most people. Well, at least some of the some of the current rhetoric in the United States. I think that what China is doing is incredible in terms of from a global perspective. And you know, they are becoming the biggest trade partner to many countries in the world, probably including DRC. I, I, I would say they're your biggest trade partner. And they're in there building infrastructure, uh, creating jobs, you know, whether that's Chinese jobs or local Congolese jobs. I'm not too familiar, but they're certainly creating Congolese jobs more than were present before they came. Uh, and they're investing a lot. And I think that that is something that I admire. Um, and that is something that the United States can learn from um, and try to replicate. And the United States used to be very good at that. Uh, the United States used to be the biggest trade partner for a lot of countries around the world. Certainly in South America, I believe in Africa too. I don't know if the United States used to be the biggest trade partner for DRC. It used to be. It used to yeah, be, it right? Be it used to be. Ago. So I, I think about... China um, as a partner in that respect, not necessarily as a competitor, but how can all three parties work together to improve the circumstances for the people and make it a win-win-win from all sides? Okay, well, Egan, thank you so much for being with us. It was a pleasure to, to talk to you. Marius, thank, thank you, you very much. See you soon in Congo. Yes. <laughs> thank you so Good. much. Thank you very much. Au cœur de la ville de Kolouézi, un lieu hors des tumultes.
où chaque instant se savoure et chaque plat se raconte. Ici, la passion se glisse dans chaque geste. Les saveurs naissent entre les mains d'artisans du goût. Et le raffinement devient une expérience. Un cocktail, une note de musique, un regard complice. La Villa Maëlle, c'est plus qu'un restaurant. C'est une invitation à ressentir. Notre adresse, Centre Commercial La Joie, 6015, route de Licassi à Colouésie. La Villa Maëlle. L'art culinaire, saveur envoûtante. <rire>